Today we've got a Copeland 3D compressor on a R449A parallel rack with an intermittent oil trip. So we are going to balance the oil regulator as well as do an overall clean of the oil system components as well as demand cooling module. So let's get into it. This particular compressor is equipped with a Copeland Centronic oil safety device. The first thing to start this job off is we need to get as much oil as possible out of the compressor and into the oil reservoir as possible. We do that by valving off the oil regulator and attaching a hose from the oil pump itself to the top of the reservoir with the compressor on and using the compressor's own power to pump that oil in until it does go off on safety. We'll monitor the sight glass while this happens and once we do go off on oil safety, the M and the L contacts on this Centronic will now have voltage. That will confirm that it is in a lockout. So we'll measure that with the meter once it does go off on oil safety, which it just turned off. So we'll take our field piece meter here and check the voltage difference, and we do have it. And now we need to pump down the system. It is equipped with a demand cooling module, so we need to valve off the line feeding the demand cooling, as well as valving off the suction king valve. And Chad is valving off the discharge king valve while I do this teamwork. And we'll take a hose once we have everything valved off and dump any excess gas that's in the compressor into the next compressor on this on this particular rack. Now that we've got the compressor pumped down, two half inch bolts hold the cover plate for the oil pickup screen, which we will pull and clean and drain any excess oil that is in the bottom of the compressor as well as clean the Centronic sensor itself. With a big boy wrench, we crack that nut and using a pick gently pulling out the oil pickup screen, which is surprisingly clean. That is a good sign. Sometimes these things can get very gummed up. And there's an oil pickup tube also that is in there with a slot that is supposed to be facing down. If it's not facing down, you will have problems. Getting this out was kind of a pain on this compressor. Uh, it was jammed in there very, very tight, but we did eventually get that pickup tube out. So Chad will clean the pickup screen as well as the tube while I pull the Centronic sensor and clean the screen on that. The Centronic sensor does have a copper washer on it that very important not to lose and that it is properly reinstalled. This also wasn't too bad, definitely needs clean, but I've seen way worse. And while we have this compressor pump down, we'll clean the demand cooling sensor and sand it down. This was incredibly dirty. Uh, you don't necessarily need to replace these yeah, sanding them usually works. Using Dialog, we'll reinstall the demand cooling sensor. Another thing I have to stress is to wear proper hearing protection in rack rooms where at 90 decibels, it's very loud in here. Protect your ears. We are almost ready for startup, so now that everything's clean, we will take Brad's 2CFM NAVVAC vacuum pump and evacuate the compressor for any contaminants. Our final step is to balance the oil regulator to properly do this. We have an OCV5 check valve and we must take our pressure difference between the oil reservoir and crank case suction pressure, which in this case is five, and then plot it on the manufacturer's graph to find out how many turns from the bottom we need to adjust the oil regulator for the proper level. We now know we have a five PSI oil differential, so using the graph from the manufacturer, we can determine that it'll take 10 counterclockwise turns on the oil regulator from the bottom to maintain a half full sight glass. These are not instant, it will take a little while to fill up to the proper level, so you just have to monitor it. Henry actually recommends waiting a day, but we sped this up through the power of editing, and you can see we are at a perfect level after a few hours, and as well as all the other two compressors on this parallel rack. So that's it. Thanks for watching our video. If you enjoyed it and got something out of it, if you wouldn't mind hitting the thumbs up button to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and click the notifications bell to be notified when new videos come out. HVAC School is far more than a YouTube channel. You can find out more by going to HVACRschool.com, which is our website and hub for all of our content, including tech tips, videos, podcasts, and so much more. You can also subscribe to the podcast on any podcast app of your choosing. You can also join our Facebook group if you want to weigh in on the conversation yourself. Thanks again for watching.